Welcome to All-Star Championship Wrestling. An hour of excitement with the biggest names in professional wrestling. And now, here's your ringside commentator. Welcome to Championship Wrestling, fans. We have a great lineup of matches today planned for you and interviews. So stay tuned. We'll be back with Championship Wrestling. Match is a one fall, 10 minute time limit from Miami, Florida at 2.15, seconded by the Max's Saul Creechman. His opponent from Memphis, Tennessee at 2.41, the King, Gary Lawler. Welcome to an hour of championship wrestling. David McLean here with co-host George Cannon. George, what an exciting day we have planned for the fans today. Thank you very much, David. And let's say hello to all the wrestling fans out there. We know it's the festive season. What better way to start it than watching all of this excitement? And incidentally, Dave, I thrive on excitement. So what better place for me and all the fans to be but right here for another hour. And you're right here at ringside, George, the best seat in the house, right next to the ring. You can see all the action. Saul Creechman taking over on Lawler, whom I did not expect to take Saul Creechman lightly. And you can't do so, as you can see. He's obviously learned some tricks from the Maxes. Well, I don't know what's been happening. Obviously, he has, has a few wrestling holds, although he hasn't showed them yet. If he's going into the ring without any wrestling knowledge, which it very well could possibly be, then he's in for a lot of trouble. But we'll find out as the night wears on. Saul Creechman many times running from an opponent. Well, that's the case when anyone's in there with a the big 450-pound Yukon Moose, and Saul has wrestled the Moose. Although they didn't entangle much, Saul did attempt to take over the Moose. There, he picks up Lawler for a body slam. The man is confident. Well, he should be confident. He has two other bodies in his corner, and I think somewhere in the game plan is this. And of course, it's strange to see Saul in there and to see the, his, his team outside the uh, ring, but of course, I think that this is going to happen. If Saul gets in trouble, these two fellows are going to come in the ring. And that's why you, I, and everyone else against the policy of having someone outside of the ring when a match is going on, whether it be a manager, or a tag partner or whatever. We have to get rid of them, David. There's no two ways. Saul Creechman bridging back on Lawler, stretching that back, also the neck, giving it a little choke there. One, two, baby. Saul Creechman is coming out alive in this match. Not running at all. In fact, it's a complete 360 turn for Saul Creechman is taking the match to Lawler. Lawler just gaining the momentum there by flipping Saul over and Saul staying on top of him. He's giving Lawler the measurements he always echoes to his men, Mad Max and Super Max. That is, stay on top of your man, don't let him breathe, and kick away. Creechman doing it now. Lawler hasn't seen the light in this match yet, George. Well, something just happened that I don't believe. They brought over two chairs. The two Maxes are sitting in their chairs. They've waved off the referee to show that they are not going to interfere. If they do not interfere, then we might see a good wrestling match here. I'm just wondering exactly why are these two fellows in that corner? There has to be a game plan. Well, they're here obviously to watch their manager, Saul, and I'm sure to help him if he's in trouble. Right there, Lawler's quickness showing. Lawler, who's an excellent wrestler, has been taken over by Saul. Saul Creechman has shown some promise. Now Lawler's showing his experience. And why not? He has about four or five more years in the ring than Saul. In fact, this is the first time Saul's really mixed it up. A big body slam. Let's give Saul Creechman some credit. He's watched professional wrestling all his life. And it's obviously paid off. Saul 
Cole knows all the tricks, George. He's, he's waiting for some time. Now he scoots to the outside to take a breather. Well, he does know all the tricks. That's absolutely true. Whether he can do them and perform them, that's another question. And I noticed something else, too, that the expression on the face of both Max is sitting there changed a little bit in the last minute or so when they thought that Sala was in trouble. And I think that they're at a point now, as you can see by the expression on their face, that if something serious happens, they're coming into the ring. There's no two ways about that. Lawler with a possible pin here. Oh, a big backdrop. Saul coming down hard. Oh, a nice punch there by Saul. Another. Saul's putting him right to the side of the face of Lawler. He's doing exactly what's necessary. Ooh, right into the turbo. Oh! Anticipating Saul's move, Lawler moves out of the way. A nice boot by Lawler. A jab to Saul's throat. Saul Creechman a bit in trouble now. Lawler with a headlock on him. Connie Marker right there watching the action. Saul trying to push Lawler off and Lawler holds on. Lawler working that headlock. Nice take over there by Lawler. Saul takes those legs up, George, and puts Lawler in his proper place at the moment. Well, I'm very, very surprised I, that the, <laughs> something like this should happen. Lawler was in command. He relaxed for a brief moment. Saul took advantage of it and, and got him in the head scissors. He's back in position again, but if he keeps laxing like he is, he's going to find out that Saul's going to take every advantage. Saul Creechman and Lawler now. Saul backing him up. Reversal. Big backdrop. Lawler to the second rope. Coming off. Lawler jams. Here they come, George. The Max, as soon as Saul looked like it was over for him. And they're pounding away. Connie Marker has to call for the bell. He does so. The bell sounds. I need a referee decision. I see Connie Marker. He's giving me the signal. Saul is disqualified by the use of the Maxis coming in. The winner of the match, Lawler. But Saul, let's make a note, manhandled Lawler throughout the match. Saul did the job on Lawler until the last second. And then the Maxis came in to take over on a weary and what seemed to be dazed and out of shape, Gary Lawler. Saul Creechman really did a great job in taking over Lawler in this match. Unfortunately, Max and Super Max came in. Fans, you stay tuned. We'll be back after these messages and interviews. Fans, you're going to see it Saturday, February 9th, 8 p.m., Northside, Tyndall Armory, Indianapolis. First time ever. Five all-star tag team matches, five single matches. First time ever. Ten tag teams in the ring. Twenty men simultaneously. $20,000 to the winning team. Now, let's say the Hogs go in there, the Hog Cousins, Wild Hog and King Harley Hog. If one of them is thrown over that top rope, fans, the other hog has to leave. It's a tag team battle royal. Two men will walk out of there, one with 10000 the other with the same. Fans, it's $20,000 to the winning tag team. First time ever, it's going to be Bedlam. You'll see Bobby Cole in there with Bobo Brazil, the Hogs, all of them, fans. It's tag team combination, and you're going to see it, fans. Also on the card, fans, Dick the Bruiser and Yukon Moose Cholock in a lumberjack match versus Super Max and Mad Max, managed by Saul. It's like a human cage match. They'll throw the wrestlers back in, fans, if they go on the outside. 
Bruiser and Moose versus the Warriors. Also, fans, you're going to see in action championship tag match. The Wild Hogs versus Bobo Brazil and Bobby Colt. That's right, the Hogs versus Bobo and Colt. Also on the card, fans, you're going to see in action Hangman and Baron versus Stormy and Jeff Van Camp. Van Camp hoping to return from Florida. Also on the card, fans, you're going to see Dr. Graham and Kangaroo Kent versus Carter and Calypso Jim. An assortment of other stars will be there, fans. It's all coming your way. Indianapolis, Northside, Tyndall Armory. It's going to be a spectacular evening, fans. Five single matches, five tag team matches, and it's all in Indianapolis, Northside, Tyndall Armory. Plenty of free parking surrounding the building. Tickets at all ticket matches. Man, George the Moose. How many pounds did you announce him at, Dave? 449. And his opponent, the Black Saint? 251. Oh, I wouldn't like to be in the Black Saints' outfit of shoes right now. He's not only outweighed, he's outpowered. And it looks like his punches are very futile. The Moose is a big man. I've known him for a long time. He's always had a lot of power. He hasn't lost any of it over the years. I think we'll see a quick match here. Oh, the Moose, he's in finer shape than ever. He's looking great, he's big. Those big, powerful arms coming into the Saints, knocking the man down. Oh, no, oh, oh! Sitting on the Saints midsection. Not a pleasant experience at all. Locking up there, the Saint gouging the eye, possibly just the nose of Yukon Moose. something in that mask, George, although the referee checked it prior to the match. He may have placed something in it. Oh, I've seen him taking something out of the mask. It might be a metal object. It might be a metal object is right because he just put something back in and there's a lump. Whatever it is, he has something in the mask. Moose is going after it anyway. Moose is going after it. Some big punches by the Moose. Hitting him there the side of the hand. Now the knuckles to the midsection. Moose. Johnny Shorn says, allow me to have it, Moose, or I'll have to disqualify you. Oh, the ring's moving, George. Hope he doesn't put him in this corner, Dave, where I'm vacating the premises. Yukon <laughs> Moose doing it to him. He's hitting the moose. It's doing nothing but irritating the man. Look at the size of the moose. Yukon Moose Cholak. Moose, you did it, brother. You gave him the big L squash. So what was that exactly he had in his mask? David, these guys with the mask, it's a common occurrence with them. They have a piece of metal. It's like a cast iron. I'll tell you, look, I see the mark on my head? I'll tell you, that stings. I'll tell you, I hate it. Now listen, I give him the L squash, 460 pounds. I'll tell you, He's like a pancake right now. I'll tell you, I don't like to do that to anybody, but he made me mad with that piece of metal in his head. So I give him 
a little super duper El Squasher. He should have just stuck to the rules, Moose, and tried to wrestle you fairly. But who can beat you, Moose? Not Dr. Graham, not the great Wojo, of course. And what about Wild Hog? You want to body slam him, obviously. That's what I want, a body slam match with the big hog. He's talking in the dressing room. He's been around the country. He's been down in Kentucky. He said he's going to pick me up and slam me. But I'll tell you, I'm going to slam him, and I'm going to squash him and, and uh, that Creechman and his partner, his brother, and I'm going to make a big club sandwich. I'll tell it. you, that's going to be the Moose Cholak special club sandwich. Thank you, Moose. We're going to get on with the next fans. All right, go. Fans, let's go to the formal introduction of this next match featuring a high flyer that is King Harley Hogg and also Calypso Jim. They're entering the ring right now. Here they come, Wild Hogg and none other than his partner. We're awaiting him right now. This match is a one fall, 10 minute time limit. Assisted by Wild Hog at 268, King Harley Hog. His opponent from the Caribbean at 241, Calypso Jim. coming in the ring and fired up. Well, this match has started off at a great pace. If we can keep up like this, we're in for one exciting match, Dave. Calypso threatening to give him a punch, flirting with disqualification. This is a fast flying action match. The Hogs took their time coming into the ring. They didn't want to mix it up with a big Yukon. He may have squashed one of them right there in the aisle. Well, I noticed one thing. There was a detour taking place. And the moose wasn't the one making the detour. These two fellas, the hogs, they were the ones making the detour. Calypso over the King Harley Hog. Oh, what a drop kick. He told me he was going to do it. He told me he can do it. Calypso Jim. He said, David, I've been in my own gym out in the garage. I've had the big weight, 25 pound sand weight on each ankle, and I've been jumping, jumping, jumping. I've been listening to the music of Jeffrey Osborne, Patrice Rush, and Chaka Khan in the Zap Band, and I've just been loving every minute of it, exercising with those weights, and now you just saw it, Calypso Jim giving a demonstration of what all the training is about, high-flying drop kick. King Harley Hall giving him a fast, jolt to the throat, possibly now choking him if that chin is not holding his forearm back from the throat. to the throat, George. It just takes the wind out of Calypso. Well, you know, I was watching Calypso earlier in the match. Like a lot of our wrestlers, like a lot of the wrestlers, Calypso has a tendency to ease up once he has his opponent going because he doesn't want to inflict capital punishment to him. And this is the problem with a lot of wrestlers that I talk to, and I tell them, I understand your feelings sometime, and you, you have this soft spot in your heart, but you can't afford to have it when you're wrestling the type of Harley Hogg or J.R. Hogg. There's no two ways about it. You're right, because they don't let up at all. Oh, and nice. Bye, right there. Harley Hogg pins him against the rope. Him there. Oh, he anticipated that Hogg was holding that rope. He 
again, the wind is taken from Calypso Jim Sale. Oh, smashes him there, his foot's on the rope. From Johnny Shore. Johnny Shore, we're going to need a referee's decision here. In fact, Johnny, the foot was on the rope. Did you see it? I didn't see the foot on the rope, so he stole the match from him. That's all. Johnny Shore declaring the winner of the match, King Harley Hogg, a disc justice, but the referee was blocked from seeing the action. No fault of Johnny Shorn, though. Fans, stay tuned. We'll be back in a moment after these messages and interviews. Card for you here on the screen, fans. And while they're doing that, let me tell you, it's going to be an exciting evening. Ten tag teams in the ring, 20 men simultaneously gunning for the 20,000. Also on the card, fans, you're going to see the Lumberjack match, Bruiser and Moose versus the Warriors. Also on the card, fans, you're going to see the Hogs versus Bobo and Bobby Colt for the tag team titles. What a match that will be, fans. You're going to see the belts. They're up, and the Hogs will be in there against Bobo and Bobby Colt, fans, for the championship. Also, fans, an assortment of other matches on the card. It's all coming your way. Indianapolis Northside Tyndall Armory at 711 North Pennsylvania Avenue. And, fans, it's going to be the big 20-man Battle Royal, 20,000 to the winner. Also, don't forget, Championship Wrestling is going on tour, fans. Exciting wrestling coming your way, and it's coming to your ear. Marion Armory, the kickoff, this coming Friday night, January 25th, 8 p.m., it's the Marion National Guard Armory. Tickets are on sale now at Van Sporting Goods Store. I spoke to them three days ago. Tickets are there. Ringside seats are available. It's this coming Friday night. You're going to see a Battle Royal pole battle royal and also dr graham invades the marion armory also fans championship wrestling coming to Terre Haute friday february 1st 8 p.m tickets available in Terre Haute at the honey creek mall athletic department sporting goods store also fans championship wrestling coming to kokomo armory saturday february 2nd 8 p.m dr graham and bulldog don kent coming to kokomo you fans in kokomo that are ready for wrestling come out that night, Saturday, February 2nd. Tickets available at Dick Sanburn's Sporting Goods Store and ringside seats are available now at Dick Sanburn's for Kokomo National Guard Armory. Also, fans, championship wrestling coming to the Anderson Armory Thursday, February 7th, 8 p.m. You fans in Anderson that have been holding your tickets a while due to a cancelization of snow and scheduling of an event in the Armory last month, this is the night for you. Thursday, February 7th, 8 p.m. Remaining ringside seats are still available, fans. They're in Anderson at Bob's Pro Shop. Also, fans, don't forget Championship Wrestling returning for once and for all to Columbus, Indiana, Friday, February 8th, 8 p.m. And tickets right there, fans, on your screen. Columbus, Lincoln, Mercury, Dotson dealership. You want a Nissan car, get out there to that dealership and get them Friday, February 8th, 8 p.m. Columbus National Guard Armory. What an exciting night of wrestling coming to the Columbus National Guard Armory. Also, fans, wrestling returning to Lafayette Thursday, February 14th, 8 p.m. All-Star card there. And also, fans, don't forget championship wrestling anytime you want it right to WRTV Channel 6 here in Indianapolis on Meridian Street, and we'll sponsor a show for you. Bobby Colt, the big news. He and Bobo Brazil. Bobby, you won those belts, right, partner. David. You won them by beating Super Max in the middle. That's right, you know, Bobo gave Max a beating. We gave both of Max's beating. So, you made a mistake, brother. You put the belts on the line. We've got them around our waist, and now we got the hogs to contend with. Well, let me tell you something, brother. Right here's the belt. You guys think you can take this from around our waist? You go right ahead and do it, because Bobo and I are gonna fight every step of the way. To Here keep they these come belts. in through the locker room doors, and you have something in your hands, so what? You're taking up Bobby Colt's time. Let's get one thing straight. When I signed the contract, it was to be, but... This match is a one-fall, 10-minute time limit. 
from Washington, D.C. at 218, the Patriot. His opponent, managed by the self-proclaimed world's most intelligent wrestling manager, Dr. Jerry Graham, the great Wojo. Wojo. Wojo looking in fine shape today, and George coming over to sit in between us, I might add, none other than Dr. Jerry Graham. Well, wait a minute now, Dave. I have to take exception to this. I don't know if you know this, but Dr. Jerry Graham and I have a history of ill feelings. I have no love for Dr. Jerry Graham, and I don't think he has any for me. If he's going to sit here, then it's going to have to mean that I'm going to get up and leave because, quite frankly, I can't stand the stench. Well, you're doing all the fans of the WWA watching this broadcast today a big favor getting out of here, George Cannon. It couldn't be because you've learned to respect your betters. What I've been watching this ring is the great Wojo, the WWA World Heavyweight Champion, who before this capacity crowd here tonight is giving the Patriot the beating of his life, and he's doing it with good, clean, scientific wrestling. I've seen a variety of slam suplexes. Here's another slam. Wojo is certainly impressing this crowd. He's a big favorite here in the WWA. Graham, let's make one correction right now. You said that I have no respect for my betters. Well, you might be right, but I do have a lot of apathy and a lot of feeling for, for charitable cases. And you, Dr. Jerry Green Jr., is the most charitable case that I have ever run across in all of my years in professional wrestling. You can rant and you can rave and you can carry on in your vociferous manner, but it doesn't mean a darn thing when you get in the ring. You are incompetent, you haven't got the ability, you do not belong in the professional ring either as a manager or a wrestler. Well, here's a man, supposedly an expert on wrestling, telling somebody like me, who's won 997 consecutive matches in a row against a top talent in the world. You are Wojo. Me, I'm talking about my own professional career. <laughs> Excuse me, I backed off to manage Wojo now, but I have defeated 997 of the best talent in the world, David. and I wouldn't lie about a thing like that. Let me that. tell you something, David. You know, there used to be a program on television called Fantasy Island, and then it went off television. But not really. Every time you see Dr. Jerry Graham talking, this is Fantasy Island all over again. He's living in a fantasy all of his own. Most people count sheep when they go to bed. Not this guy. He dreams of matches that he's won. This man has won zero. Yes. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Watch this. The referee should be stepping in now. The Patriot fans taking the action to the ring. It's giving the Wojo some great drop kicks and now a big body slam. The Patriot seems to be a challenge for the great Wojo. I don't know what's going on here. The Patriot's obviously got some object concealed in his mask. He's using it to butt Wojo because under my training, Wojo couldn't even... Those were drop kicks, Dr. Graham. Then he's got leaded weights in his boots. As you see, there, there we go. Everything's back to normal now. A clothesline. Is that a legal move? Is that a legal move? Of course it's a legal move. But John, listening to George Cannon here, it's real easy for an overweight old man, a has-been, to talk about one of the top talents in the world today. I just wish Cannon was about 20 years younger you so I could get him in the ring. You don't have to worry about me being 20 years younger. I could be 90 years old and in a wheelchair and still destroy you. Any day that you think that you are capable of getting in the ring with me, I will once again put on the wrestling shoes. My wrestling boots are still shine, and I'm ready to go anytime you think you want to get in the ring with me. The backbreaker by the great Wojo, it could be all over. Dr. Graham, he's done it again. The great Wojo has defeated another person. What can I say? The cream always rises to the top, and Dr. Graham only manages the cream. And I'd like to add... Fist Cannon, stay in your seat. The Patriot did give him a challenge, though, Jerry. He gave him a few great drop kicks, but let's put it to where it is. He defeated the Patriot, but can the great Wojo defeat a man? Look at this. Is this necessary? Of course it's necessary. The man has to be taught a lesson. Wojo commands respect when he goes into the ring. You're looking at the WWA World Heavyweight Champion, the holder of the most prestigious belt in wrestling, who's going through all competition like a hot knife through butter. And you know what I'd like to say? Let's get this camera on me here. Let's get this camera on me. The people want to see me. Let's bring that camera in here close. Where's the floor director? That's better. The great Wojo is the number one undisputed heavyweight champion of the world. There's many other promotions 
going around claiming this man or that man is the heavyweight champion of the world. Wojo will wrestle anybody that claims to be the world champion, be it in Indianapolis, be it in Chicago, be it in Madison Square Garden, or the wrestling room at the YMCA in Louisville. Nobody has got any business referring to themselves as the world heavyweight champion until they've met this man, the great Wojo. Now you people can talk. You people can talk. You champions from your minor league promotions can talk. But until you get in the ring with Wojo, you're gunless. You're gunless. Dick the Bruiser, you're gunless. Moose Solak, you're gunless. Hobo Brazil, you're gunless. And furthermore, we were some very insulting, degrading remarks by an overweight, fat has-been named George Cannon, a man who I'm perfectly capable. Look at this. What about Stormy Granzik? He's on his way back. Well, Wojo already put him out of wrestling once. He could do it again. Now they're carrying this Patriot out of the ring. This does me good. And you know, Cannon, sitting here standing to wrestle me, he'll get the same treatment, except they haven't got anybody strong enough to carry that big fat slob out of the ring. And I'm only Man. sorry. We're gonna have to leave you now so we can bring you another great match, the main event of the day, featuring none other than Bobby Cole and Bobo Brazil. Fans, stay tuned. Their opponents at a combined weight of 538, the playboy Bobby Cole and the king of the cocoa butt, Bobo Brazil. Supermax was looking at me. I stood up to seem as if I was speaking to him. It gave Bobo Brazil the chance to pound the way on him. Well, one question, Dave, maybe you can answer for me. What are the hogs doing outside the ring? I think they're afraid for the Max's sake, going in there against the big, rugged Bobo Brazil. Yeah, but Dave, where does this end? Next thing you know, it'll be the hogs and three other guys outside the ring in a team match. Next thing you know, we'll be having a Texas death match, and it'll actually be a tag belt. You'll see it here, fans. The Hogs here worried. This match, ladies and gentlemen, is a no disqualification match. No disqualification. Bobby Colt with a beautiful drop kick. Well executed. <laughs> Colt catching him with one foot. The Maxes. Right into that turnbuckle, George, and he's pounding on it. Oh, he was really coming in with a great force there. There's Bobo. What a move by Bobo Brazil in blocking the turnbuckle from Bobby Colt. And look at the way Bobby has grabbed the opportunity to start working one of the maxes over right now. Look at this great teamwork. Absolute great teamwork. Bobo Brazil was there when needed. Colt switching it up there. Mad Max went over to your corner on the left side of your screen to protect Super Max from being driven into it, and Bobby Colt reversed it. Hopefully we can bring all of this match to you. It's a one fall, one hour time limit. But it is a no disqualification match. If the one hour time limit elapsed here within the arena, the match would be called a draw. Brazil will look like a well-oiled machine, George. Well, undoubtedly, they've been practicing. They've had a few matches together as a team. They put it all together. They're ready to go now. Look at that. Almost a three count. Johnny Shoren seeing the leg on the rope.
Mike's driving Bobo's head into the knee of Mad Max, and he feeling the effects of Bobo's hard head. It's a no disqualification match. Shorn couldn't do anything about it. The only way the match could end is by one of the wrestlers not being able to continue. If he's a legal man in the ring or the match ends by the time limit. Shorn aware of this has not sent Hogs back to the dressing room. five points but unfortunately that's not the way professional matches are judged you have to be beaten give up disqualification and it's going to come to a head pretty soon Colt and Brazil are right at their peak right now we're going to see an exciting finish Mad Max stopping on Bobby Colt laying that boot into the chest choking him in short it's giving him a count what good will it do? It's no disqualification. Fast kicks to Colt by Supermax. giving him a good chop. Oh, Max and Super Max. Fear the likes of Bobo Brazil. in the ring 
with Mad Max on Colt. Bobo has to get back in the ring. It doesn't matter if he wrestles when he gets in, but he has to be in so not to be counted out. Johnny Shore is counting away. the legal man, but he pinned both the backs. I, I can't help it. Bobo Brazil was the man in the ring, and it's a no disqualification, and he was counted out. Can't as you make any way, Johnny? The Hogs were working on Bobo. I know, and that's why it was no disqualification. It's, a, it's not a good match when it's like that. But they Bobby Colt, Bobby Colt, you pinned both of the Maxes. We pinned the Maxes, Mills. We should be the world's tag team champions right now, David. Unfortunately, Bobo Brazil was the legal man. Johnny we Shore. had a both pad. One, two, three. We deserve the belt. Bobby Colt fans possibly robbed here, but it was a no disqualification match. Johnny Short, even if they used chairs, you couldn't disqualify him. Bobby Colt jumped off the top rope, which is an automatic disqualification, but I didn't disqualify him. So the winners are? Uh, the Mad Maxes. <laughs> And Super Max. The Mad Maxes are the winners. Fans. We'll have to leave all of you in the midst of this action. We'll see all of you next week. This is David McLean for Championship Wrestling with George Cannon. So long. to take on my champions, the Maxes, but that's water over the dam right now. Right now, they're going to have to face up to these men right here, the most devastating tag team in all of professional Look wrestling. Look at these guys. Look at Get these in guys. on this camera shot. Look at these. These are the hogs. This is the King Harley hog. Look at this guy. Does he think he's that's something? Right. And this is the biggest one, Wild Hog. Fans, they're over 300 and some pounds. This one close to 400. You're going to see them in there, fans, against none other than the tag team champions. Who are the tag team? Brazil and Bobby Colt. Well, we had a football team with their last name that was a, well, that was a loser, and now you're going to be a loser also. Let me tell you something, Bobby Colt. You and Bobo Brazil, baby. It's just you and the hogs, Jack. And let me tell you, when we get done with you, there's not going to be anything left. It's just going to be like when we come out and slop you guys, you know? Like when well, you, you know, you guys came out here and interrupted Bobby Cole. Yeah, Bobby Cole. We interrupted He's him just because he was slandering he, our name. That's he right. was calling them the pigs. Hey, we don't even we. have to talk to these people no more. Fans, it's all coming Saturday, February 9th. Saturday, February 9th. 8 p.m. starting time, Northside Tyndall Armory, the main event. It's going to be a big 20-man, $20,000 over-the-top rope tag team battle royal. First time ever tag team action in the battle royal. Also on the card, fans, February 9th, Indianapolis, Indiana. Dick the Bruiser and the big Yukon Moose versus the Warriors. That's a lumberjack match. Also, fans, you're going to see in action Wild Hogs. That's the return match. Fans, you're going to see Bobo Brazil and Bobby Colt versus the Hogs for the Tag Team Championship of the World. What an evening of professional wrestling. Tickets available at all Ticketmaster locations. You can't ask for more than coming down to 7-Eleven North Pennsylvania to see wrestling. Super Bowl Sunday with Entertainment This Week as the Grammy-winning group Toto talks about their new music. This Sunday is Super on...